On November 15th, 2024, Valve celebrated the 20th anniversary of Half-Life 2 in nearly the best possible way, releasing archival footage of different eras of development, including, for those that study the development history, the Holy Grail, SIGGRAPH 2000, along with the original Valve recorded demos of E3 2002, which was canceled, and E3 2003. It is apparent that these demos were recorded on an era accurate build of the game that Valve still had in their archives. These recordings were recent, however, they're technically incomplete. Because at E3 2003, these demonstrations were given in a booth. This booth had a narrator reading from a pre-written script in order to give context as to what the attendees were seeing. The issue is the only known recordings of this narration is from a camcorder from 2003 and has been sitting on YouTube in some form or another for over 16 years. Now, everybody has likely seen the recording where Greg Coomer, marketing guy at Valve Software, gave the narration. This is the video where the legendary Can It Run on My 486 comment came from, but there is a less known version narrated by Gabe Newell. However, the sound quality for both is abysmal. So I got into contact with a professional audio restoration specialist, an individual whose job it is to do these kinds of things, Rob Cooper. By the way, if you need audio restoration work done, contact information to this guy is down in the description below. And most recently has done the audio restoration work on the Yarbirds BBC box set. What you're about to see takes the original camcorder audio recordings that exist on YouTube and run them through a multitude of top-end audio restoration software. MVSEP, UVR, Ableton, Isotope RX Pro 10, and turned it into this. We also combined the Gabe Newell narration with the Greg Coomer narration and cut between the two so that it sounded like both of them were giving the presentation at the same time. However, we also wanted to make sure that we kept the audience reactions from both, which was much harder than you'd think. Being able to just restore the narration would have been easier. We kept the audience reactions as well. Also, stay tuned to after the E3 presentation for a surprise. I'm Tyler McVicker, and I hope you enjoy. Start off by giving you an overview of Source, which is the engine we created for this game. And then I'll show you Half-Life 2. It's been five years. <laughs> it looks like hell. Wow. We've been rather busy in your absence, Mr. Freeman. The Source Engine gives us capabilities in four main areas. Believable and realistic human beings, graphics that were previously only possible at a Hollywood movie studio, an integrated materials and physics system that create an unprecedented level of interactivity, and artificial intelligence that molds these characters, these visual effects of world get you an experience gamers have never had before. An enormous number of details go into creating a character like the Chi Man. His eyes glint based on a radiosity calculation of local illumination. They self-shadow and follow you as you move. He has 40 separate muscles in his face, and his emotions are based on a taxonomy of facial expression created by Dr. Paul Ekman, a research psychiatrist at the University of California. Same system that gives him emotion also gives him a voice. Pay attention, Mr. Freeman. I'm only going to say this once. Source's capabilities are completely language independent, so it's just as easy for him to speak in Chinese as it is in English. This character technology gives us a broad palette, emotional palette to draw on. You will hate your enemies and you will fear for your friends. And perhaps you'll even discover feelings you've never had before. <laughs> so, with characters who react emotionally and are so expressive, we need a world that's similarly flexible and interactive. The world of Half-Life 2 is very dynamic. Any surface can have its displacement map altered dynamically along with its collision model. 
The world is also built out of materials. So if something looks like wood, then it sounds like wood, scrapes like wood, floats like it, and if you shoot it, it'll fragment like wood. Materials in the physics system interact with each other, so a set of steel drops floating will behave exactly how you expect. <laughs> Didn't think this would be complete without a giant pachinko machine. <laughs> You can have constraint based. You can have flexible models interacting with complex surfaces. There's no limitation on the complexity of those interactions. So it's this level of believable and consistent interactivity that opens the door to a wide variety of new <laughs> gameplay mechanics. I guess I'll run on my 486. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. So the graphics of the Source engine are based around shaders. The same approach used to render movies like Toy Story and Monster Bay. The walls here are actually bunk map subdivision surfaces. If you look closely at the water, you can see it refracts merged objects and properly incorporates a Fresnel term to modulate the surface reflection. Over here, you can get a sense of the wide variety of visual effects that are possible using Source, especially in combination with the hardware platform as advanced as ATI's Radeon 9800 Pro. Our hosts. <laughs> There aren't any <clears throat> arbitrary restrictions in the source on how you can use these effects. For example, you can take one of them, apply them to a human character, effectively building them out of water. So as you've seen, source has a great deal of flexibility of where you apply visual effects. Source also gives us complete control over the inputs and outputs of the system. You can use this flexibility in some very interesting and surprising way. Now that you've had an overview of Source the Engine, let's go ahead and look at Half-Life 2, the game. This is stuff you won't get on your boy. <laughs> Does that mean I have to upgrade? <laughs> <laughs> it might be time. <laughs> My spreadsheet ran so well. <laughs> even though we can build environments that we couldn't even dream of at Half-Life 1, it still wouldn't be a Half-Life game without our old friends the zombies and our trusty crowbar. next segment will introduce you to Alex, one of your friends in Half-Life 2, and reintroduce Dr. Piner, one of the scientists from Black Mesa. Gordon? Gordon, snap out of it. You're staring at me again. <laughs> ah, warming up nicely. Are you sure you don't want me to swap out the polarizer? That's not necessary. Just checking for potential moduli interference in the interstices. Conditions could hardly be more ideal. Huh, I hope so. I'm sorry, Gordon. I can't help thinking that this isn't going to work. 
But we should have listened to my father and done it his way. It's just, this is the first time I've had any hope of really striking back at the Combine. And now we're sitting ducks unless we can get this thing running. Come on, Dr. Kleiner, is it gonna work or not? Now, now, there's nothing to be nervous about. Let's see, mm -hmm. massless field flux should self-limit, and I've clamped the manifold parameters to CY base, LG orbifold, the hill. <laughs> oh, do be careful. <laughs> <laughs> we should just cut our losses and... Listen. Scanners, that's it. We gotta get moving. Here, Gordon, take this. Let's get out of here. This is your home. It's too late. Run! Oh. Here we're in an old part of town outside City 17, one of the main locations in Half-Life 2. This part of town has been booby-trapped by a friend of yours named Father Grigori, who's kind of a survivalist monk. He's left traps all over the place for you to make use of. Why combat forces have driven you underground in the city center of the sewer.
was keeping you. Hope you didn't have any trouble finding me. In Half-Life 2, you're rarely alone, so you see this strange of the team AI. Remember when we thought Black Mesa was as bad as it could get? Emphasize that these are not scripted sequences. The AI is determining when your allies choose to advance and how to best help you out in combat. While you're usually working as part of a team, your team isn't necessarily always human. And in this segment, some of the less intelligent aliens have been fooled into thinking that you are one of their commanders. You have something that has the right pheromone on it, so these ant lions will do what you tell them to.
There are quite a few wide open outdoor areas in Half-Life 2. And the combination of the physics system and the terrain system make for some pretty interesting gameplay. In this last sequence, you'll get a look at the citadel at the center of the alien combine. The combine is a fortress which is slowly eating its way through the rest of City 17.
like old times. The PC version will ship September 30th this year. Uh, we haven't announced the shipping yet for the Xbox version. Thank you very much for coming here today, and I hope you like the game. So presentations like this don't come together quickly. I've actually worked on and refined this presentation for a year and a half. Of course, some of the 2002 demos were released on YouTube, and we'll talk about those another day. But because of the 2003 leak and the Worldcraft map pack that leaked alongside the main build, we have a lot of the in-development versions of these demonstrations, meaning prototypes of a convention showcase of a prototype. And I'm not gonna go through all of them, but I will show you one of my favorites. If you're at all interested in a deeper exploration of the development of the E3 presentation, let me know in the comment section below. If there's any other topics you'd like to see me explore through the development of Valve's past products, also let me know. If you are at all interested in keeping up what's going on right now, my Discord invite link is down in the description below. I am very active on there and I talk about whatever I'm working on there. If you'd like to support videos like this, get your name in the credits, get to see them early once in a while, check out my Patreon page, also down in the description below. And once again, huge thanks to Rob Cooper, audio restoration extraordinaire. Contact information for this guy if you at all need audio restoration services is also down in the description below. I'm Tyler McVicker, The Passionate Gamer. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Peace and hair grease. Adios.